And overall, I feel like game developers have gotten better about being honest and pushing back release date. The game should not be broken upon release. You guys may have run into this a few times where you're playing a game on your Xbox console and then you decide to continue that game on your PC and it just doesn't work right on your PC. There's all sorts of bugs and it's just overall unenjoyable. And then there's other times where a game looks amazing and it runs great on your PC but then when you hop over to your Xbox the graphics just aren't there and it's kind of glitchy. So if you're like me you're probably thinking to yourself well what the heck happened? This is the exact same game. Why would it be an issue running from one system? to another. I mean, if all games are developed on a computer anyway, well then what's the issue? Because if a developer can make a game that runs perfectly fine on PC, why would they have such an issue with getting it over to Xbox or PlayStation 5 or the Nintendo Switch? Probably one of the most recent games that kind of shows off this runs great, doesn't run great is Hogwarts Legacy. So Hogwarts Legacy ran great on my Xbox, but when it comes to PC, a simple Google search will show just how many issues actually came up with with FPS issues, with stuttering issues, with just overall general performance issues on the PC. And these aren't low-end PC specs that we're talking about. These are high-end machines that are having these issues. And here on the other end is everybody's favorite left down for a game release, Cyberpunk 2077. This is an article by Den of Geek that is talking about how the console edition is finally playable, while not optimal, is finally playable for your PS4 or Xbox One. One. Now CD Projekt Red had to release a ton of patches for all of these consoles to even get the game working. On launch this game was practically unplayable on your console. However you could get a decent experience on your PC. There were still bugs but the game was most definitely playable on PC on launch. So what are some reasons that developers actually have such an issue with getting games to work over here but not over there? And one of the reasons are your hardware and your components. So when developers are making a game for the the Xbox or for the PlayStation or for the Switch, they know the exact specs that they have to work with. Of course, when they're developing for a PC, they kind of have to gauge it out of, okay, how much should we actually put into this game? Is this game massive? Are we trying to achieve 4K graphics? Are we trying to make sure that people need solid state drives? Are we going to require that people have a high refresh rate for their monitor? Are we going to require that they have 64 gigs of RAM? Are we going to push this game so far? that they better have the latest graphics cards or this thing is just not working for them. Hey, if you guys like these videos and you find them informative and helpful, take a second and consider hitting that little subscribe button down there. It really does help out the channel and spread the word. Now, I would wager that most game developers will not push anything that hard to require those specs because they want this game to be as accessible to as many people as possible. And honestly, that's why I believe that a lot of your games even now still only take between 8 and 16 gigs of RAM to actually run. When developing for a PC, game companies have very little that they can actually rely on as being a constant with their customers. And honestly, that might only be the operating system. So it's going to be a lot harder to make a game optimized to run on a PC. So in a nutshell, you're talking about the difference between a small group of components that are going to go into your consoles to making a game work for a wide range of specifications that are going to be anybody's anywhere custom PC. PC. And one could actually argue that the PlayStation and the Xbox are just locked down PCs because the original Xbox was built around DirectX, which of course we know was a PC component. With as many as literally thousands of different PC combinations, it really makes the consoles a lot more appealing to develop for. And if your main focus is for a gaming machine, $500 will go a lot further on a console than it will on trying to build an actual gaming PC. Overall to me it always feels like a PC is just a lot more expensive because you feel like you have to have all of these high-end components. And you need these components if you want to run the game at any type of higher end rate than you would get on your regular old console. So it makes a lot more sense to use a console when you just want to download the game and just play it. You don't want to mess around with any configurations, you don't want to have to worry about new firmware for your hard drives or 
or your sound cards or your graphics cards. You just want to download this game and just play it. Well, that's where a console is going to excel. Now, of course, your PC is going to have a lot more control over how your game is actually going to look and feel and play. You can tweak almost anything on your PC to make it customized and play your games exactly how you want. But of course, that's going to go game by game and developers are not going to be able to develop for every single one of those things. So what was the deal with Cyberpunk 2077? So the real issue came down to that the game was released long before it was actually ready to be played. This didn't matter if you were playing it on console or PC, the game was simply not ready. It just had way too many bugs. Well, what does this mean? This means that developers were rushing their games out because there was a ton of hype behind it. They had celebrities supporting it, a massive ad campaign just showing off everything that 2077 was going to be, and a serious deadline that was clearly up way too soon before the game was even ready. I think within the past two, three years, we've seen a few of these games do this. So like Fallout 76 is another one that comes to mind. And overall, I feel like game developers have gotten better about being honest and pushing back release dates so that we actually get a game that is fully playable on day one launch. Of course, we're always going to have patches and some little fixes that things are fine, but a game should not be broken upon release. You also may notice that a lot of games are actually PC exclusive and developers don't port things over to consoles. And I think this is because a lot of time they have to gauge whether they're actually going to make a profit by porting these things over and going through the development work that it actually takes to get these from PC over to console or console over to PC. So it's almost like you're building two different games because your console and your PC, they don't work the same. And believe it or not, a really big example of this, something you might not even think of is water. So water is notoriously one of the hardest things to actually render in some sort of 3D animation. And this is an article here on Medium talking about how it's just so difficult to render water really well. And the nutshell version is because it's so fluid, there's so many different particles and they're all going in their own direction, especially when it comes to lighting and physics. So when you're programming this for Linux or Mac or Windows, there's all sorts of different shaders and renderings that you do to make it work on PC. Now, when you hop over to the console, it's totally different. How the lighting works, how the physics works, especially for things like water. Another thing that game companies have to consider is how much are they willing to put into it to not only make it work on PC, but also make it work and be optimized for your console as well. So they may have to look at it and decide, do we want to really develop this game twice? Overall, I think the best thing that developers can do is number one, not rush their games. Make sure that we've got a good game as soon as it comes out, because that's going to go a long way. And number two, if you are going to release a game on PC and on a console, take the time to go back and make sure that both versions are optimized so you've got happy PC players and you've got happy console players. Well, thank you guys for watching. My name is John. This here is the Xbox Basement, and we will see you in the next video.